Well, security is a crucial aspect of your smart home and Apple makes it easy for cameras that support the HomeKit secure video feature. Now, if your current system doesn't support this feature, then you'll need to upgrade and purchase new ones. But what if I told you that you can enable the same feature for your existing camera system or by using this Homebridge plugin for free? Well, it's true, HomeKit Secure Video is a pretty cool feature where it is incredibly easy to set up, gives you access to 10 days of iCloud storage, no need for any third-party apps, and there is an easy viewing through the Apple Home app. However, there is an upfront cost to replace your existing camera system. Now, thanks to this HomeBridge Camera UI plugin, you can enable the HSV feature for your existing IP cameras plus have a dedicated next level dashboard to view them. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, before I proceed further into this video, there is another um, home bridge dedicated like system just for cameras called Scripted. It allows for HomeKit secure video, works well with Ring, Unify Protect, and your RTSP cameras. In fact, you can have Scripted and HomeBridge installed on the same hardware. However, since HomeBridge is my core system for my smart home, my personal decision is to stick with the HomeKit secure video plugins that are available in HomeBridge instead of installing and setting up another brilliant piece of software. But do let me know in the comments if you want me to do a tutorials on Scripted. Now, on the other hand, the camera UI plugin is the ultimate companion for HomeBridge to manage your cameras and have an incredible, rich and reliable NVR-like dashboard. So for all of this to work with HomeKit Secure Video, we will need one, definitely IP cameras that use the RTSP protocol. We will be using the Wisecam V2, Anki NC400 and some generic IP camera. Plus, you will also need HomeBridge running on your network. In my case, it is already installed in this Argon One case uh, with a Raspberry Pi 4. And don't worry, in the description, I also have tutorial videos on how to set up HomeBridge as well. As always, I've, al I've already broken down the video into six parts with their timestamps in the description. They are one, define which IP cameras will work with HomeKit Secure Video so we can set the baseline. Two, uh, we're gonna look into some generic camera RTSP configuration from the a plugin overview. Then we will go into the plugin configuration. Then we will go into a quick overview on the camera UI dashboard. Then last but not the least, we will also look at the HomeKit secure video demo. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. Okay, now let's go and set the baseline for which generic IP cameras that can work with HomeKit secure video. So when you go later down into the configuration, they all work well within HomeKit and you also can take advantage of the HomeKit secure video. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna access one of these IP cameras over here. So I'm gonna access the generic IP camera that I have here that supports both video and audio. Unfortunately, the Anki doesn't do that. So now let's go into the configuration and see what are the core settings that need to be enabled to uh, ensure we get the full HomeKit secure video support. So let's log in into this IP camera. What do you want to do? You want to go to configuration. You want to go to video. Now you want to make sure the encode mode is always H264. Do not select any other encoding mode. It should always be H264. Next, the resolution should be 1080p. Now, if you're using your, your own NVR, then you can maintain the maximum resolution and then you can use the RTSP link and in the plugin configuration, we can downgrade it to this resolution. But if you want to record directly to HomeKit secure video, so please make sure you change the resolution to 108p. You want to make sure the bit rate is variable bit rate and not constant. So you want to change this to VBR and you want to leave the rest as is. And if you want, you can tweak the frame rate as per your desire. Then you want to go to audio and you want to make sure the encode type is AAC. So if your RTSP camera allows you with these features that can be tweaked, 
please make sure the video is H264, resolution is 108p, you want to make sure the bitrate is VBR, and within the audio, you want to make sure the encode type is AAC. Once you do this, you are uh, guaranteeing that the configuration of your current generic IP camera meets HomeKit secure video standards. Now from here, let's go into the generic uh, uh, RTSP configuration for these IP cameras. Now the first stop you want to go is the configuration, standard configuration um, that is already available within the plugin. I've also left the a link in the description. So if any of your cameras are over here, make and model, you can go ahead and select the configuration and then just replace it with your IP address, username and password. So this is what you, so like for example, the Wisecam V2 that I have over here, I would use and go and use this configuration. Now let's say if your configuration is not here or your branded model, you want to go ahead and access this site called ispyconnect.com. It's the best database to uh, auto-generate your RTSP links. So you want to go to more and you want to go to camera database. So in this case, let's go ahead and access the brand Anki. And then you want to scroll down and then you want to make sure which model it is. So in my case, uh, the model is one of these over here. So all you have to fill in is the IP address, username and password that you set to access the camera through the login uh, page of the camera. And then that's about it. So in my case, the IP address is 86.14. Now, if you don't know the IP address, please access your router and you can get access to the IP address. This is the link. The password is admin and the password is admin1234 and generate link. So this is the link. So you want to copy and then you want to open up VLC just to make sure the link is working. So you can go to file, open network, paste and say done. So that's the link. It's working right now. So we, we know it's working. And then I will also do the same thing for the second generic cam. File network paste open so we know now both the cameras have we know now both the cameras have the um, RTSP links configured and that's how easy it is so you want to just make sure you go to the model the brand the model and all you have to do is set the IP address the username and password it's that easy to generate the RTSP link for your cameras now from here, let's go into the the plugin overview. So this is the Homebridge camera UI, and this is installed within Homebridge. So you don't have to install it uh, out of it. So it's as a plugin. And these are all of the features. So it's basically an application, a web application on its own. You get live streams, cam view, uh, multi-language. You can even set up modern detections to get uh, alerts on uh, multiple services like Telegram, MQTT. And you can also do image recognition. So if you have the Amazon Web Services, you can also enable this through the same dashboard. User interface is beautiful, really rich and reliable. And also it gives you that HomeKit secure video. So it's that easy. So that's all of the features and that's the plugin overview. Don't worry, I've left the link in the description and there's a lot more information how to configure and, and what all it is, which we're going to see further down into this video. So once this is done, uh, that's the overview. We're going to go and install the plugin. So we're going to access our home bridge. We are going to log in and you want to go to plugins and you want to look for camera. Now you're going to look for camera UI. I've already gone and installed one camera. So I was uh, over the couple, past couple of days just to enable the HomeKit secure video and how uh, it works properly. So all you want to do is uh, once the uh, plugin is installed, you want to click on settings. And then from here, you want to go uh, into config before going into interface. Um, interface will open up the entire camera UI dashboard, but I would recommend to in, uh, configure your cameras over here. Now, just in case, if you are preferably using the camera FFmpeg plugin, you can already copy paste all of your RTSP links from there into this um, uh, plugin and you can uninstall the camera FFmpeg. So right now it's disabled. So let me go ahead and open up the camera UI and go to config. 
So the first thing is the interface. So in this case, you want to make sure you uh, mention the user interface port. By default, it's 8081. I've changed it to 8082 because 8081 has uh, my ZigBee to MQTT. You leave it as it is. Then you have your camera. So in this case, um, these are the wise cam that's already over here. Let's go ahead and add in one more camera so we know uh, the configuration. So first you want to give it a name. So I'm going to call this top. And then always recommend is unbridged. So you enable this option. So when you have to add it manually into the Apple Home app. So uh, instead of appearing automatic. So this is recommended. Make sure the HomeKit secure video is enabled and pre-buffering. So from there you want to give the branding. So it's generic model is 5MP and serial number even as it is. Now the stream configuration, what you want to do is we want to go back to this. And we want to generate the RTSP link. You want to copy. You want to go back to the configuration. And you're going to start your video source by dash RTSP underscore transport. We're going to say use the uh, TCP mode of communication. Then we're going to put dash I and we're going to use this. So it should be the small i. And then we're going to copy the same link and we're going to add it to the video substream source, still image. Now, if you wanted to maintain your 4K resolution in its originality to record an NVR, and here you can downgrade it to the specific uh, resolution. So in this case, I'm just going to downgrade to 720p, or you can do it into 1080p. So I'm going to leave it 180, 1280 to 720, the maximum for, uh, frame rate to 15, enable audio, and then you want to go uh, leave the rest as is. Don't change anything over here. Leave it as is. HKS if we leave it as it is. Sensors and switches. If you want to enable the camera sensors. And if you enable doorbell, you will also see a another option uh, that's available. The trigger doorbell. But we're going to leave it as it is. Uh, that's about it. That's the entire configuration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add in the next uh, camera. And then we'll see and save the configuration. Okay, I've already added the second camera. If you want, we can go ahead and update any of the options, the overall global options. The MQTT, if you have an MQTT server, so you can send messages and receive messages. You can enable that if you have an HTTP server. So these are all of the global options you can enable. So I don't have it, I'm gonna leave it as it is. And all I'm gonna do right now is click on save and let's restart the Homebridge service. So once you see the camera.ui is listing on port 082, it means the interface is working. So let's quickly go to plugins. Let's click on settings. Let's go to config just to ensure there are no errors. So you can go to cameras and you can, you are able to see uh, the feed right into the home bridge. So it takes some time to load. And this is why, that's why I said it's the ultimate companion that you can do it right now within Homebridge to see the feed. So that's the Wise Cam. That's the generic IP camera. Now with the Anki Cam, sometimes it doesn't load the image. It's more on the Windows base. So let's go now and click on interface. When you load the interface for the first time, the default username and password is master and then you are allowed to change it. Uh, to create a new one. So I've already done that. So let's go ahead and access it. Now, this is the dashboard, right? This is the dashboard. And now you can go ahead and add in whatever widgets you have over here. So you can add in widgets, you can remove out widgets. So it gives you all of those options. And if you want, you can get that NVR -like, NVR like dashboard. So we can add in the front camera, top, and we can add in the bedroom cam. So these are the three cams that we have over here. So we have the Anki already over here. We have the top and the wide. So this is that uh, rich and reliable and we are like dashboard you can have. So from there you can even look at all of the camera feeds uh, directly over here. So it'll you can just look at the cameras. Another good thing over here is you can go and enable notifications and recordings. So these are all the recordings for my bedroom cam. So this is all stored within the Argon One. You can also get notifications and you can also have a complete cam view. 
there is a next major upgrade coming soon where you can integrate your Unify and Ring de uh, devices into this camera UI dashboard. So with that, this also gives Scripted a run for their money. Then from here, you can also tweak the other camera settings over, uh, within this UI, which I recommend just doing it everything within Homebridge, but there are some advanced settings you can add. So if you go to Alarm, you can even add an email, MQTT uh, messages. If, if there's any notification or detections found, video analysis, you can even add in zone. So you can uh, do this within the web uh, UI. And then you can also uh, enable recordings based on time. So you can uh, do it in a local storage. You can also enable notifications and within the notifications, you can also enable Telegram. So you can even create a Telegram channel and get snapshots coming uh, into that. So this is another fantastic tool. If you have Amazon Web Services, you can also enable face recognition and you can even backup. So that's how uh, rich and reliable the camera UI dashboard is. It's the ultimate companion for Homebridge. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go into Apple Home app, we're going to open up the Home app. We're going to add in the accessory. So remember it's uh, as unbridged, you have to add them in manually, more options, and you will see that the cameras are there. So let me go to Homebridge and I will add in one camera and the process the same for the next one. So I'm going to add in the front camera, add anyway, add in the code, location, update the name. And that's where the uh, HomeKit Secure fe uh, Video feature is now enabled for this generic IP camera. So I can enable uh, what to do when we're at home or away. So I can change it from detect activity to run some automations, stream, uh, no action, and stream and allow recording based on uh, rules. If it's based on person, object, or uh, animals, it will start recording and also I can set in the zones if I go into that option, but I'm going to leave it as a stream. I'm going to tap on continue. So we have this camera, generic IP camera enabled with HSV. And I will also go ahead and do the same for the next one. So even for this camera, it's already enabled the HSV feature. So I'm just going to leave it as a stream done. So just let me kill the app and open it back again. Successfully, we imported the generic IP cameras into Apple HomeKit with HSV support. Now, what's it like with the HomeKit secure video? So it's native. So this is the Y scan that I have over here. And if I tap on the below section, I can scroll through all of the videos that I was through. I can even select the date or dates. And uh, so uh, it works perfectly. So this is the Y scan. It doesn't come uh, with this feature. So I've got the home kit secure video. Those are my kids playing in the night. And if I go to settings and if I go to recording options, it's set now to while it's home to stream and allow recording. Now while setting this feature, if I go to more options, I can specific the mo motion, right? Specific motion. Word. So I've enabled only for people. I haven't done for animals or vehicles or packages. And if I want, I can even enable uh, the record video feature. And besides that, I can also go and activate an uh, activity zone. So that all can be done within the uh, Apple Home app. Just like that, using the camera UI plugin, I was able to have it as an ultimate com companion for Homebridge for that reliable and rich NVR like dashboard got my generic IP cameras, migrated from the camera FFmpeg plugin to the camera UI plugin, works fantastically well with the HSV feature. And I've done this with no additional upfront cost. So do let me know if you have any intentions in the comment section to migrate your current IP cameras to this plugin. And if you need any assistance, do let me know, I'll be willing to help you. So until the next time, stay safe, have a nice day and see you in the next video.